So again, we're gonna start from the basics with gradient mesh and just drawing a square. Basic square, fill it with color. So use your rectangle tool, which is M on your keyboard. Then draw a little square or a rectangle, whatever. A squares are good. Then what we're gonna do, we're gonna add uh, two rows and two columns evenly, and I, I like using the option when you go under object, and under object you go to, um, I just I just did it, make, uh, create gradient mesh, okay, so I had my default settings, uh, whatever you use might be, you need to make sure it's two rows by two columns, so you want to make sure we have two by two, Okay. Now we will you leave it as flat. We're gonna make our own. We are gonna add our own gradient. Okay. And then do okay. So now what we're gonna do is we are manipulating some of the points uh, color. So we let's select using your V for shortcut. Actually A, sorry. A. It's the direct selection tool. Select the middle mesh point. That's a mesh point, okay? Now navigate to your colors and choose another color. I don't, um, I'm going to choose something maybe purple, all right? Whatever color you want, just navigate it. So you can see how now this color kind of goes around um, all four squares. Once you uh, color your middle point, notice how this is spreading all four directions. So what we want to do, we want to add another color going and around this and kind of stop it. So kind of halfway point. So what you want to do, uh, just watch me first. So what you want to do is we want to add l several more patches. I want to add color here, here, here. Now one thing I'm going to tell you is going to save you time. Last color I selected, that will be the one that's going to be used. So I'm going to des deselect the shape. I'm going to select my color I want to use. In this case, I will use like a reddish, maybe green would be better. Or green shade. Now, the reason why I deselected it is because I want to use a new color and I want to get confused with my purple, okay? So I selected that one. Now I'm going to go to my keyboard, learn U. U is mesh, okay? What? Uh, uh, mesh. Uh, you need to select the mesh. Now, for, first of all, you need okay, mesh. Now, remember, I uh, select your shape back, hit U or select the mesh tool. Oh, okay. U is the shortcut. Because later on, trust me, you're going to be go choosing U. Now, notice because last time I used green, it's showing in the bottom here, so you can select that shade. Hopefully it lets you. If it doesn't, that's okay. We, we can select in a minute. And I'm going to put a point mesh right between um, my middle and my out, uh, left side, like right in the middle. Now, oh yeah, I didn't do it. Now I select green. Okay. Sometimes it doesn't. So notice now, right now, I just have a big blob, and those here are competing for transition, right? Yeah, so it's not very smooth right now. But that's okay. But I want to put another one. I already saw it in my green. I want to put another one, again, in the middle, right? So right here, and another one in the middle here. Just remember what we're doing. And then right here, kind of around it. So look what happened. We create a little circle. See how it's blending out around it? Now what happened now is look how many points we got. This became, that's why you want to start with something with fewer points and you want to add to it. Now if you do mess up and you added too many points, go back with the direct selection tool, click on it and delete. It's going to delete that whole patch. Okay? So you can always delete your points. So again, I just click on that point and deleted it, and I just undid. Okay, so now, because we have so many, 
I can actually make, now what happens is our blending is going to be less, uh, it's going to take Occupy less space because now this little patch is looking at, partially it has still some blue in here, has green and purple. So now how many squares do we have? 16. Yes. So we went from 4 to 16 squares. And now you can do this. Now if I want to add, an, so shading wise, I want to add maybe around the top, I want to add another smooth transition. So I'm going to choose, and now I'm going to choose my mesh uh, tool. So it's U for shortcut. And I will probably add some points here. Now be careful when you select the tool and you are in a color, because sometimes if I select the color, it will change the one I just selected. You see that? So don't change the color until you click on something. So I'm going to put my purple around this area here. On top, now I can select purple. But notice how the purple it doesn't go all the way across. Why not? Because my mesh has been stopped by this shade, right? It's blending. So if I want this color to continue on, now I have to select another one. Now this is a tip. Just watch. So instead of selecting the same shade, you may not actually be able to. You may mess up. Use the eyedropper. I for shortcut. We're going to be using that a lot. And then choose around that purple, uh, that uh, orange. So go back between, and I'm going to go using my shortcut keys, A, and then I, A, I, and I selected it. So now my patch continues. And that is the reason why you want to start with fewer patches, because now I had to select three points and select the color. And if I had only one, I could just do it easily, right? The more you add, the more points you have to select. In that case, go ahead and add those points add the color to it, and then do the same thing for the bottom part. So now for the bottom part, I'm going to go back to my mesh patch and click, because I want to use the same orange and that's why I'm clicked, I'm just going to go and click here and select, uh, click A on my keyboard to select direct selection tool, click the next patch, click I for eyedropper, pick that color, then again, a, <laughs> that's why you need to learn the shortcuts. Okay. What do I, you have to select the point. You can do the gradient mesh, but uh, unless uh, gradient mesh, but sometimes you may click outside and it will so draw you over points. Okay, so now that's what we have at this point. Zoom. So now we're going to add, we're going to select the mesh point. I'm going to select the one right so it's like the right here tool. I direct selection tool like I go between and now I'm gonna choose another color for here so you can choose another one uh, I think I'm gonna choose light blue now notice how this continues and you notice ooh, notice how the blend just goes the four points same thing on the other side selected now use the <coughs> eyedropper tool to select the color close to the middle because that's the most concentrated color you have. Okay, So always choose one if you want to repeat it close to the point because it's the most concentrated. Then select one. Again, I'm going to go between A, direct selection tool, I, eyedropper, and that is why you need to learn your shortcuts. I'm not going to be going clicking 20,000 times. So choose that color again. Again, A, an eye. You can do option click. You can, but this is faster. Option click? Like no. With the eyedropper tool? Uh, actually, I'm recording, so hold on. So, yes, go ahead and click that. <laughs> if you have any comments, please raise your hand. Okay. So, now we're going to actually work on actual uh, objects instead of just playing with it, doing psychedelic things. And you will connect to public. So click on the finder, so it's selected, do command K, connect, and go to the public on the server, not my public, public, 
Now in here, go to lab materials, 2350, and it's gonna be lab five, so just drag lab five out of the uh, box. So, so drop that into your desktop. After you uh, drop the, um, the folder into, or you move it the folder to your desktop, now we're gonna go into, um, I'm gonna create a complete new layer for it. So this one I'm going to lock, and then I'm gonna create a new layer, and I'm gonna name it original. Original, okay? And I guess it'll be the first original, so I'm gonna name it original one. So that's the name. And I locked the previous one, so I don't do anything. So have that layer selected. Now go into uh, document file place so you and find grapes. From the new folder, lab five, get the grapes. Okay? So place your grapes in here. Now they're actually kind of big. So and that's fine because I'm we're not gonna do all of them. Uh, we're just gonna look at choose one, maybe this one. But so it doesn't matter what size it is right now. It fits that one grape will fit on the page. Now what I do, there's two things. There are two uh, uh, two different ways of doing this, and I'm gonna show you both. One, uh, some that I like, some work for you. There are two ways. So I want you for now just watch, because if you do this, you're gonna miss another step. Okay. Um, once I have this grape, what I do, I duplicate my layer. And the reason why is I'm going to be sampling color, but I also want something to look at. However, there's an option that you can do use as well. It's very useful, window. It is called Window Navigator. Okay? Navigator. If you haven't used a navigator, it's kind of, it allows you to see what you're doing. It's awesome thing to do. So now I am, I actually like to work in a mode where I can see when I draw right my color. I want to still see the one underneath it. So so what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna lock my original layer, leave it alone, and then I'm gonna create my new layer, and I'm gonna call it grape. Okay, so I have my grape. So go ahead and do so. So now, well, actually for this shape, you don't need to draw a square. You can just use your pen tool and trace around your shape. So make sure you are on a correct layer. <coughs> go ahead, activate your pen tool. <coughs> okay, now one thing, choose the color, like a mid-tone color that you have for the grape. So go ahead, pick it with your eyedropper. Okay. Make sure it picks. And then just draw around the shape. And I like to zoom in when I do so. Try not to have too many points. Have as many as you think is necessary, but too many points is not a good idea. I have one student that like 20,000 points around an um, object. It's just too many points. So right now, we don't care if we don't show it. Make sure your navigator is showing. So we basically just do the little trace around it. Okay. Now, if it's something needs, um, you can manipulate a little bit. All right. So there's my, there's my grape. So for those watching later, if you see this one, I just did that in class, we're drawing it. But here, uh, we're gonna have to see the colors behind it. So we're going to change our view. So go ahead, go to view, change it to outline. Outline. Now, on your, on your, in your layers, go to the original one layer and click on the toggle visibility. That's the look, kind of looks like a eye kind of thing. When you click on it, actually, don't click on it. Click the sorry command when you do that. Click the command key. 
command and click on it so I shows up and it should yep so now what happens is your grape layer and go back to your grape layer that grape layers is actually this is all in the outline mode except we just toggle the visibility for original one so now what you're gonna do is you're gonna have to analyze the shape and don't worry about uh, oh by the way you see that and you can see obviously that my projector sucks because you can see what happened to the colors right on the projector but notice here you see those little points in the grape don't worry about those points that could be a separate shape drawn there so don't worry about it just look at the grape itself um, so notice where you're gonna have some you need some patches right here right there has to be a patch because it's all lighter there's some ones on outside so you really have to analyze this shape the color so I'm gonna zoom out so I have my navigator showing and I'm just gonna start this is a good for me middle point to start my patch so if you don't think this is a good middle point I mean just click on the side of the line oh it went kind of crazy if it does that for you kind of goes like this go into uh, object select the select the shape go into object and then go create mesh sometimes the best thing to do is doing this because if it's you know you notice what happened right it was kind of doing funny mesh so I just went into object create radiant mesh and I'm gonna do two by two that's kind of my standard now what can we do what else can we do because there's light in the middle can we change something here well we can do to center that's gonna make it white towards the center and then around that you can add some color. So go ahead and go gradient mesh, uh, create gradient mesh when you select it, two by two, rows and columns, and appearance, select to center. Do okay. So notice now, you probably can see on your, and again, the projector sucks, you see that there is white coming out, it was way too big, that's okay. But what we want to do is grab that point with a direct selection tool, which is shortcut is A, and move that towards the side here. And move, right? Don't move the point in the bottom, just move this. So what, el what else has to happen for that point to be smaller? We, gotta add more points we have to add more points around it, exactly. So this is what you're going to do. Hold, select. Um, mesh, you click around it, but lo notice when the transition happens. So right here, now with that color selected, you need to select a green shade to use that you actually had. So select that one, or you can do thing with the eyedropper and sample the shade, and you can do the option with it as well. Okay, so it's gonna sample the green point. I don't know why I choose purple. I want to make sure it's, uh, it's choosing green. If it doesn't choose green, I, sometimes I need to I unlock the other layer. If that happens to you, sometimes you need to unlock the other one. Okay, should be able to. It's, it's just right on the edge somewhere. My thing is really picky. I'm not sure why is it picking up purple. There. I have mine. It picked it. Sometimes you just have to click around it until it's green. Right? Now, now what easy thing is, because we chose the green, um, you can use that again. Do the whole, go to your gradient um, mesh. Click around on the other side. And you can see how we're constraining it, right? Just needs a few more sides. But notice here how the shape is going. So what do you think should be changed here? Select the direct selection tool. We need to change that rotation. Right? We need to change that to here. So th that means what? If we're changing it, we need to add another point. <laughs> So um, I just add my point here. Again, I'm going to kind of confirm that and move that point. And I can add another one. So that's good. So 
now we need another point, the green one around here, constrain it, and then in the bottom. And look at that, we have our highlight. So it doesn't look like this. I may have, again, you may do it a different way. As long as you get that little highlight, you're good. So get your highlight. You need now you probably need to put color around this. There's another shade around the shape. Notice here is actually lighter. Kind of, I, I know mine you cannot see that on my projector. So you have to do is using the mesh points, kind of add a mesh going around here and the bottom as well. Uh, the side. Right now, if you spread out, like what ha may happen is notice here if I add lighter color, it's gonna go to this patch too. If that happens to you, if that, if you add a color here, and it's gonna, let me show you what I mean. If I select this color and I want to go lighter, okay, this may happen. Look at, look at that. I have like white spots everywhere because my last color was white. I don't care. But see, I don't want this to happen. So make sure the last color select is green. And then when you min minimize this, if you want to change that patch, then you would add another gradient mesh. So I'm going to un um, undo. And I'm going to show you the correct way. Okay. So here I have, I'm going to select my color, my default green, because I'm going to go with my green. And then select my mesh tool. And then I'm going to click, there's a break here. If you look at your shape, you can see it. Now, some of you, if you don't see it, it's because you have not done the different mode. So if you don't see your shape like this, you cannot see colors of your shape. Make sure you're in the outline mode and then toggle the visibility for the original one. So here, because you need to see the shapes. You cannot see that on a projector. It's around here somewhere, around the edges. And I think there's something here too. There, that's good enough. So now I'm going to go and manipulate those points. And again, um, I just need to see, I probably will leave this one alone and then look at the edges and then change the color. So let me show you what I'm going to do. Select the out, outer points. Oh, come on. Uh, sorry, I need to minimize this. That's good. So I'm going to select that outer point here and then select my eyedropper and click on the outside. You should, on the projector, you won't see much difference, but it's a difference when you actually do this. Okay? So keep going. Again, on the projector, you probably won't see anything. And select the lightest around it. You need to select the color around the patch, around that point. Okay? And again, on a projector, you won't be able to see it. So you need to keep working on it yourself, okay? It's kind of the closest. If it comes up to be picking something really dark, then you know that's wrong. So just click a lighter one. Because there's many pixels you're dealing with pixels too. So I'm going to choose this one. And this one is actually eyedropper. Thank you. I. So I'm going to select all my points. I hate projectors, but that's okay. And I'm going to manipulate it, the shadowing and the highlight and so on. Okay, so you can kind of see how I have my points and just go around it selecting different points. Now do not change this one because then the transition may actually go from all the four points. So just the ones on the edges. <laughs> so you want to get really close to the edges and kind of see how they transition. So select the bottom. See some of them seem white. So I'm going to select the lighter one. And around it, you need to select the colors around it. It's going to add more dimension to your um, image. So I selected another one. So I'm just going around the points, kind of selecting them. 
So I just go on the short, I'm just using the shortcut keys between A and I once I drew it. So, and you can, if you see imperfection, how you drew the shape, you can fix it. So just do it around the edges. That's all I'm doing. Okay. Now here, everything looks okay to me. I'm just gonna leave that alone. There's more shades, but this is, I just want you to do a simple grape. Then I go on top here. There's some colors here too. So now I can actually toggle visibility on this one so I can see how it looks like. And obviously, <laughs> imagine it looking better, but projector sucks, right? So you have to keep working on it. Because on the projector, I can, you can already even see. Can you see anything? It's just doing a little here, but nothing really too much. So it actually, I put lighter here by the projector. Projectile is killing my beautiful image. So let me continue on and I'm going to untoggle the visibility for this one. And I'm going to double check all my points have the right colors. Because there's, there is a variation in, in shades. So you kind of want to go around the, the point that you have selected and choose ones close to it. There's variation in it. So choose the ones that you think are best. Because you want to show variation. Now here, on this distance here, I probably add more points. The reason why is there are actually two shades here, so I'm gonna put one here. But I do it later. You add to it. Okay. Now continue and start picking it because I want to transition. I want to make sure the transition is smooth. And again, make sure all the edges are selected. It does help to zoom in your shape and kind of see what you are doing so I check my outside see in this point here is white so I'm gonna fill it with color close to it I don't want any white I want color so I'm just going now the second layer notice every point I'm adding okay Every point I'm changing color on, on this. Then I'll select the next one. Just don't get confused which points, and it has to be close to the patch, to your point. And I don't know if I went over these again, but I will. And now I'm gonna do the outer. Uh oh. Find that. I know uh, this, when you watch this at home, it's going to be our lengthy one because I want to make sure I cover everything and also I make sure my points are selected correctly. So my point here is good. Let me see the color. Because I want to make sure all my transitions are smooth. I mean, that's what is important. The blends and everything comes out okay. If it doesn't, and there is an issue, okay? So you need to double check it. And you want to add some dimension to your object. Okay. So let's continue. I'm going to continue on. And after I do this, I'm going to walk around as well and see what, how you're doing. But I'm double checking all my points. <clears throat> to make sure it looks good. Oh. It takes too long to be clicking on that. So obviously here, it seems like it's too flat as well on top. So I'm gonna add another, another points right here. 
and I'm gonna make sure they are the same. Now, if you add new points in the last color you use, they'll be different. So you wanna make sure you get into those uh, points and then use the eyedropper to sample color around them. Exactly. That's how it happens when you work with this. Told you, you might be using different languages. That's one of them. Language of frustration. Okay. Now, this is actually a big area too, and it probably, and I can see already, that needs another patch. So I'm just going to choose my last color here that I really want to use. So it's going to draw the same color. Let's put that here. And there's another one like here. I don't know if you can see this on your computer, but there's another color going around here. So I'm just gonna put that there too. Okay. So I'm going close the patches. So practice. And if sometimes it picks the darkest one, I just move my eyedropper. So second round. Sure. Okay, that's good. Now, yeah, I can also you can do you can confirm like the the shape to your um, whatever, however your highlight or your shadow looks like. You can always move the points and kind of confirm them to it. They don't have to be uniform. Except mine, you cannot see. So even if I'm doing all this, you can still see it. And if you mess up and you think you don't want that many points, just delete them. this one this. okay so I'm gonna see if I can how it's showing now if anything I missed because this is kind of small and yeah that is looking better and better I just need to pause it now on sampling my shades the colors And let me finish them up. I'm just sampling that around. Okay. I've just noticed here I need to smooth it out. And I'm going to use my... Yeah, you're going to just save it as the same file name. I'm happy to look at it for you. And there will be another part to this too. So you're not off the hook yet. All right, I think that's, let's see. I think that's good. Yeah, again, you cannot see that on the small screen, so I think we're done. So when you do this one grape, then you have to do all of them. So at home, you have to do all the grapes for this. And... Have fun. This video you can watch. So just don't forget at home all the grapes. Save that file. And save it. Make sure it fits in the page. You can see everything. Change the view. Preview. And you will be submitting that work. Thank you.